Now I'm going to demonstrate a recent addition to C Electrical V8R1 and C Electrical Expert V4R2. And this is a module called the Cabinet Thermal Calculation Module. Now based on standard um, IEC 61439, um, which valid is, is for validation of the electrical panel's thermal uh, characteristics, there's a requirement basically to work out or establish that the, uh, the panel will not overheat or will not go below a certain temperature. Uh, based on the power dissipation of the actual components, um, the surface area of the actual internals of the panel, the material that it's actually made of, and its uh, position where it's actually uh, situated. So this is um, all put down into a method which is stated in IEC 60890. So um, for this module, now you don't actually need to design the actual panel, but um, if we go back into one of the pages of schematics, um, this does require that you actually say what the heat dissipation is for each of the uh, uh, components you're going to use. So if we have a look at this overload here, we're going to have a look at the component, click on uh, DB to actually display the parts information, and we can see in there that we've got the part number, and on the right-hand side there is a field, and this is essential that you put this for any uh, component that uh, gives off heat, that you put in there the value in watts as to how much heat it actually can give off maximum rating. So this is usually supplied by the manufacturers and in our um, C web catalog this information is being put in there as we speak. So all this information is put in there. Uh, what we then do is we create an extra page. We put a description perhaps saying that this is for uh, thermal dissipation. And we open up a template. So we go to the open, choose page template and we can choose a template that's already in there. And this is supplied with uh, C Electrical V8R1 thermal uh, panel thermal dissipation, and it's with the placing types. It's an empty page, so I can say yes to this, and we can see the actual template in there. So this shows the actual placing types on the right, and a series of attributes which are going to get filled in by the actual calculation that we run. So this is a page in the schematic. I can then go to the commands, and I look down the list of commands, and there is one there. For module cabinet thermal calculation so we go into there double click to run the command now i've got one already in there i'm going to actually just delete that for now and add a new one so let's just put it as being example and the method is uh, 60890 okay and then that's part of the validation iec and that's the 6, 14, 39. So the temperature range you can also put in there that you're going to put this for, depending on where it's going to be positioned. So I'll click on OK, and I'll go to Next. Next, you're showing a list of the components with their part numbers and any functional descriptions you've put in the project, followed by the actual power consumption that you've put in there. Now, if these haven't been put in, you can put these in later on. Um, you can also filter, so if you've got different locations, perhaps multiple panels in the same project, you can filter this. You can then go to Next, and this is where the main calculation is done. We've got a series of uh, characteristics, parameters that we can set up on the left-hand side, starting with the actual panel, the enclosure we're going to use. On the top right, I'm going to click on Search, and I'm going to go down and say this is a particular manufacturer. I'm going to go into Rittle, Enclosures, and I'm going to say that this is uh, a 1000 by 1200. So I click on actually notice at this point that we also have a material for the calculation here. So this could be uh, painted steel or plastic or various different materials depending on the heat dissipation that we're going to have on that. Um, we've also got the physical size on here so it can work out the actual size of the panel. So we click OK. We've got those parameters. Um, we can now say how it's going to be installed. So it's position. And we've got the enclosure placing types here. So as soon as I click on, for instance, against a wall, it doesn't have anything placed on top of it, but it's just going to be placed against the wall on its own. So I'm then going to click on OK. And that's type D. I can then go to the temperature ranges that I can expect. So within the panel itself, I want there to be a minimum of, say, 3 degrees and a maximum of 60 is OK. That's inside the enclosure. Now I'm going to place this actually inside a building, perhaps, so the minimum of maybe 5 degrees 
and a maximum of say 35 degrees so we'll put this around sort of uk temperatures a working coefficient there can be set up so rather than working at 100 percent we'll assume it's about 70 or 80 percent so i'll put 80 percent working coefficiency we can then put the power dissipation and any equipment that's not got a power dissipation it would actually list in there i haven't got any in here but you could then set them individually the buzz bar we do have to set individually so i'm going to say that this is set giving off uh, maybe 120 watts but you do have to put your own value in there for what the buzz bar the bus bar power dissipation is and then finally with those values we can check the results and we can see the panel information as we scroll down we've got the minimum and maximum temperatures we've then got a situation here where we don't need a cooling system and we don't need a heater so we could click on finish and we'll see that that information is then put in there that's verified and we can ship that panel out now if the parameters change we could go back into the calculation go to next next again and at this point we could say for the temperature range perhaps we need it to um, be slightly different perhaps uh, outside it could go down to minus 10 and we want the minimum side the, the panel to be 10 and perhaps the maximum outside could go up to maybe 60 degrees it could get pretty hot outside but we want the temperature within the panel to be a bit lower than that maybe 55 so now if we go down to the results scroll down the list we can see that both a cooling solution of 284 watts is necessary and it gives you a possible airflow that's required and a heater is required of 302 watts so slightly different there we can click on finish and again we can see those temperature coefficients or the uh, temperature um, parameters that we have to w operate within the usage coefficient and the total calculation there for heating and cooling so a very useful uh, function which allows you to work out thermal dissipation within a panel according to these standards